we are about to tackle a huge problem. There's a big controversy in the paranormal world about orbs, which are small circles that appear in photos and videos, that appear in photos and videos that are sometimes brightly illuminated, which are commonly claimed to be evidence of spirits. We aren't discounting that these things are paranormal activity. They could be. It makes sense that if a spirit were manifesting in our plane of reality, it would naturally take on first the, the form of a sphere. I like to think of there being a sort of divide between the manifest world and the unmanifest world. And at its center, a sort of point, the philosophical point of everything in, in which things spill forth from. Unfortunately, those qualities are shared by small objects that can pass through the focal plane of cameras. And they can create the sort of effects that mimic little spheres blinking in and blinking out. And we see lots of this in people's research and in our own research that we've uh, stumbled into. So it's time to address this issue. You have to take some time and some patience to understand the problems that face us here and why it's so important. But uh, I think you'll be rewarded because we have a solution to this problem. We think we've come up with a way to fix this problem. In order to understand how this sort of visual evidence can be contaminated, you have to look at how a camera sees the world. What your camera sees is its field of view. And if you divide your field of view in two, you have an optical axis, which stretches from the lens to the background. Between the lens and the background, you have a focal plane where the camera starts to focus on stuff, which is always perpendicular to the optical axis of the camera. When objects smaller than the camera focus can see pass through the plane of focus on the camera side of the plane of focus, it can appear to be a blurry artifact in your videos and on your cameras. There could be dust motes, bugs, water vapor, hair, which can all present themselves differently depending on their motion, size, how it interacts with the light from the camera, if it's flash, if it's IR light from video. We film a lot of our investigations in night vision, which uses infrared light. In infrared light, these orb effects can be amplified and there could be uh, even more complicated visual effects happening if you're using infrared light. But one of the effects that we've seen is that when this orb moves over different background materials, they appear to uh, cast a sort of light reflection on the background and move over the curvature of the background, or the objects that are in the background. And we call this the orb reflection effect. It's a very strange effect, and we don't understand exactly how this happens, but we saw this effect in our uh, Pigeon House investigation where we captured some of these orbs on video that appear to display a, this sort of ghostly quality of gliding through the air and tracing over the surface of objects in the background as it moves through the frame. Stumbling into the orb phenomenon that we captured on video at the Pigeon House forced us into looking at this issue closer and, de and developing some sort of method to be able to distinguish between dust and hair and bugs floating through the, the focal plane on the cameras or actual paranormal activity. 
fortunately there are solutions to help us rule out this stuff as contamination. Using stereoscopic cameras gives you two different planes of focus. When you have an anomaly on camera A and no anomaly on camera B, you have an optical effect. However, there can be a problem if your two planes of focus overlap. Then the optical effect is going to appear on both cameras, but they'll appear in different places in the frames, and that's a false positive. If you take and move one of the cameras so that the optical planes don't overlap, you fix that problem. Then you're not going to have the same artifact appear on both cameras if it's just a small object like we described earlier. If you do all this and you get an orb on both cameras, you have an object that is the size that it appears, not a focal effect. It is as illuminated as it is, and you can determine where it is in the field of view and have a good idea of what size it is now. You have great visual evidence. To help apply the standard, we developed a flowchart, a step-by-step -step protocol to help you vet your visual evidence. So, you've captured an anomalous object on camera. The first step, use your common sense. See if you can determine if it's some natural occurrence, lens flare, dust motes, bugs, water droplets, breath condensation, smoke, any of that type of stuff, if you can explain it, it's all right. You do not have a paranormal photograph. Is it obviously paranormal? Do you have a full body apparition on photo? Then yeah. Common sense tells you you got that type of stuff. It's probably a paranormal photo. Also use your common sense too, if you're getting good corroborated evidence like EMF readings, temperature drops, that type of thing, then you most likely have a paranormal photo. If you can't use any of this criteria to rule out this photo, congratulations. You got an anomalous orb on camera. If you have this on video or on a still camera, are you using one camera or are you using two cameras? If you're using one camera, does the object appear in one frame only? If the answer is yes, it could be anything. It's not good evidence. If you got it on more than one frame, does it match? We look at the object size, brightness, position, focus, and opacity. And if it's on video, it's motion. Is the object consistent? If it doesn't match up, Sorry, it could be a focal effect. However, if it matches up, we see this as good visual evidence. We know the object is as it appears and not just a focal effect. However, you really can't tell its size or its position in the field of view by this method. That's why it's only good evidence. But if you're using stereo cameras, 
and it only appears on one camera, it is most likely a focal effect. If it is on both cameras, does it match the criteria of size, brightness, position, focus, opacity, and movement if it's on video? If they don't match, sorry, it's not good evidence. But if it does match, both cameras using this criteria, congratulations. You have great visual evidence. We know it is as it appears, and we can estimate its size and its position in the field of view. This is the type of photo or video the paranormal world's been waiting for. There's a lot of commercially available three-dimensional cameras on the market today. Pretty affordable 3D cameras, which seem like, uh, well, that's a good approach to paranormal photography. But those cameras are so close together, they're designed to mimic the human eyes, and they share the plane of focus. So using those cameras are no good. You actually have to take two cameras and sufficiently separate their planes of focus so that there is no overlap. The only thing that's stopping us is our budget. And uh, you know, these are the sorts of things that we want to put in place in order to capture better evidence. This would put this whole orb phenomenon thing behind us and help improve this field of paranormal research, which uh, you know right now is like pure anarchy. I mean, there's no um, standards in place to control this evidence. And that's why you see about a billion of these orb photos out there. It's crucial. And by using stereoscopic cameras, we can be able to move the field of paranormal investigation forward. You did fine. That's going to have to be enough. You did fine. Thank <laughs> you.